morning again. You would ask yourself why I'm here. Hopkin, Hopkin is not telling you that there is a talk right now, but actually there is a talk. And I want to welcome on stage Mika Yan from Homegate, and the talk is Spotting Talent, How to Hire a Great People. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. than it looks, I guess. Um, I'm super happy to be here today and to talk about this topic because I think that actually this is one of the most important topics that uh, someone that is managing people or that is part of the leadership can actually talk about. It's one of the biggest challenges to find the right people to make the pump company successful and to, do, to be good at it in the end. So it's not just about hiring, but hiring the, the right people. Um, so I've been working for the TX group for almost five years. And during that time, I had the, the chance to find nine of these great people. Well, or find nine great people and then uh, check whether they actually turn out great in the end. Um, one of these, or my, my first time when I started hiring, um, I had to fill three product management positions. And luckily, two of them were, well, they were not filled easily or quickly, but they were filled in a more or less or in a less traditional way. So one person was just joining from another company within the TX group. One person was a personal introduction from someone. Um, and she actually was um, a viewer here at the, T um, at the TX conference a couple of years back. And the third person, or th the, first, uh, the third position was filled in a more classical way. So this uh, traditional job description out there, people applying, you screening the candidates way. And today I want to talk about this third, uh, this, this third way of, of hiring and spotting talent because I think it's the most common one. And for that I've picked, or I'm, I'm going to talk more out uh, from a specific example, and that example is Ash. Ash is a PM. He was actually the person that we hired. And I want to kind of share the story based, from, uh, based on the experience um, of finding him. Um, but first, let me walk through what, uh, what we are specifically going to hear today, and that is the job description part, what are the things that I've learned there, then the screening the CVs part, once you have the job description out and people are pouring in, and then what do you do with these CVs um, that, that are left over, that you deem are positive or good potential candidates, then like that is the assessing the candidates part, and then in the end you need to make a decision, and how do you do that? Um, so let's start with the job description part. Unfortunately, it's not a lot of depth here because when I when we did the, the hiring and when I when I started out with it I guess we did what everyone that has to fill a new position where no materials are there yet is doing so we've kind of looked for for product management positions out there and we copy pasted everything that we found um, and deemed relevant for our position into our own uh, into our own job description and um, it seems a little bit rough to do it like this and with that you don't really have a plan but i think that's partly okay looking back it's it's very okay actually because it's it's important to just start somehow and with what you feel is right because you can always come back later and adjust what you have written here in the job description based on the experience that you get from the actual candidates that are coming through the pipeline. So that is basically the whole magic that we had here. Um, copy paste whatever is out there or use whatever is out there and then adjust um, accordingly at some point. But then what do you do with the people that are pouring in? In Ash's case, more than 800 candidates actually applied for the product management position. and. That's a lot of people. And to kind of boil this down to the relevant amount of people, we've um, introduced a rating system where, um, where basically we said you have to score a certain rating for us to consider you f and um, move you to the next stages in the process. So um, in, the, in that case, it was a five-star rating system. If you received only one or two stars, you didn't progress in the, in the whole hiring process. If you had three stars, you were an interesting candidate, but you were not like the high priority candidates, but uh, one, one of the high priority candidates. If you had four or five stars um, on the other side, you were really the top talent, um, uh, at least among the CVs and according to the CVs. And how did we ar arrive at, this, um, at, at the rating? So basically, I mean, we have a CV, we have to assume that it's correct and that it's true. And when you mentioned something that was really 
in line with the role that we were trying to fill, for example, PM role, uh, if you mentioned PM skills, then you received three stars. But then how do you progress? How do you get more stars? So we had other criteria which we deemed really interesting for that role. And for example, one was if you were a founder, if you had experience um, founding or um, running your own company, then that was very interesting for us because we wanted to have that mentality also in the, pr in the product managers that we hired. But you could also get a penalty. So if you had a very bad CV, for example, which seems a bit uh, superficial, but if you look uh, um, a bit su superficial, but it makes sense if you look at what kind of skills we're looking for in a product manager. So you have to be really structured and being able to bring your point across. If your CV wasn't able to portray the skill, then we said, okay, so maybe you're not your PM skills or your skill set is not where we actually want it. So you could also move back. So in the end, um, the feedback looked somewhat like this. Um, we always documented everything in the tool that we used so that also other people involved in the hiring process could follow the, th the thinking and the rationalization. And one of the other good aspects was that also if a person applied for, another, for the similar role or another role in, a, in another company within the TX group, they also saw that feedback and they could, base it, uh, they could basically start from there. So you, you avoid double work. So that's, that's good. Um, in Ash's case, we were able to boil down um, the 800 potential candidates to 200 that were more or less promising. More of them were just like hunches that there might be something interesting. And uh, 50 were actually ones with four to five star ratings that we felt were really, really good, uh, that we had to pursue a little bit faster. But now you have these 200 candidates, still a lot. What do you do with these candidates then? Um, and we had a three-stage process. So we started with something uh, very formal, which was done by the uh, HR people from the TX group. Then we went to a stage where basically the hiring manager or hiring managers were involved and got to know the person a little bit. And then once that stage was passed, we moved on to an on-site stage where basically we've introduced uh, a lot more people from within the company to that, to that person. Um, to really be effective, what I've learned is it's important to give that context of what this process looks like and what every, uh, every stage is supposed to help with in, uh, in determining whether you, you have a good candidate or not. You need to communicate that to the people involved in the hiring process. Because if you don't do it, what I at least experience in myself is when I have a, uh, a job interview um, meeting in my calendar, with a CV attached then, and I don't know what I'm actually supposed to, to check for, I revert to just asking some basic questions about the CV or some very basic interview questions like, oh, why, why do you want to join HomeGate, for example, or just check for general likability. But then if you look at really spotting the great talent, then just having this, these traits checked over and over again will not help you really. So that's why I'm, I'm always trying to inform everyone really in the hiring process like what is, is, is it what they should contribute to the hiring and uh, what kind of character traits should they check for. Um, so let's go into the first stage. And the first stage is fairly simple. It's very formal, at least for us, it was very formal. So you have some really hard requirements regarding the salary band that the person has to meet, for example, or do they have a work permit and other things. So that's what we usually use HR for. So to try to weed out really the people that, that, that where it doesn't make sense for us to talk to them just because of these formal requirements. But once that was done, we went into the hiring manager stage and that was way more personal. And what we did there is um, we took the character traits that we have previously defined in the, in the job description and also the career letter at a later, a later point. And we tried to come up with questions that actually helped us assess these specific character traits that we, that we wanted to see in a person. Unfortunately, this is all blacked out because we are still using this and I don't want to kind of uh, have everyone find the, the potential questions that we're going to ask uh, on YouTube. But if you're within the TX group and you're interested in what the, these questions look like specifically, just approach me and I will um, happily share it. But here we're really trying to understand the person better, but still looking for showstopper questions. So here, for example, even though it's not a specific question, 
if the person is if, if one of the skills is like communi like German communication skills, for example, and we switch the interview to German and the person is not able to talk to us, then that could be a hard question or some other some other topics that you see here. And here we already did like a first venture into assessing also the skill level of the person because that is something that we previously just believed from the CV. Um, so we try to make sure that this is really a person that where, where the CV is also truthful. Um, then the last stage is the one that is the most expensive and costly because here we are really increasing the amount of touch points that that person has within uh, with people within the company and we're trying to do this to really make sure that they fit into the organization but also that they have their skills required for the um, for the role that we're with, that we're trying to fill so in the in the uh, in the example of the PM presentation communication problem solving prioritization is really important and here's an example agenda that we used uh, where basically you see what kind of interactions that person has. We usually started out with a really thorough case that the person just receives right when they come to the onsite or on that day that they have never seen before. Then they get a little time to prepare it. Then they um, present it to a group of uh, relevant people. And then they have sessions with their peers. So in the case of a PM with other PMs or POs, and then also with their potential team in the case of a PM with the engineers or uh, designers, and then also with potential potential stakeholders or people from the from the management level because a PM is also the connector between all these worlds and that allowed us to get a 360 degree and also delegate some of these checks that we had on in terms of communication or analytical skills also into these groups more so that we didn't have to test everything in just one session so that is what the agenda looked like so I mentioned before that we have looked at um, the job interview and not the job interview, but the job description for um, for skills that we should check for. But then at some point we also caught up and got a little bit more professional in terms of career development and also articulating what we actually expect every um, seniority level of a certain role to to have in terms of skills. And so we've used this tool, and that's a screenshot of um, of a career ladder tool that uh, that we've used at Tutti back then, um, to then also reassess and readjust the questions that we've asked in the process. So we've also continuously improved how we um, how we assessed the uh, the candidates. Well, needless to say, Ash eventually aced all of this, and it was decision making time. So. Yes, no, maybe all these people involved. How do you deal with all that, all these different impressions? And uh, one method that that we love to do and that I still believe in is a is a very good one is getting individual feedback from everyone that is involved in the hiring process. There are other companies that like gather everyone that has seen the person and then just uh, discuss and decide in a, in a big room. But uh, we believe that actually individual feedback is more powerful because you have everyone's opinion. So everyone is heard and everyone gets their say and you can really con um, like leverage the power of all these different viewpoints in that case. Plus, if you really still want to have like this big group discussion, you can still have it afterwards and have these this bigger group discuss um, whether the candidate is right or not. Um, I also did it a little bit f more formal. I've tracked the feedback from the different candidates, but in the end, I realized that this is not super helpful because there is a different weight to these different points of ratings. So me as a hiring manager in the process, I have the strongest weight in the whole process also. And if I say no and everyone else says yes, then still there is a good case or a good reason for that candidate not to progress further. So it's not just very, not plainly objective as this, as this su suggests, but what this helped with is it kind of reflected back whether the process is working right. And if I was constantly saying no and everyone was saying yes, then probably the expectations in the candidate or the role and all that was not yet adjusted enough so that we can come to a good decision as a group. So that was the learning there. And the second big learning from um, the decision-making part was maybe is a no. So when you get this individual feedback, when you ask people for feedback, many of them are very uncertain to say yes or no. And then they come back with, yeah, probably, and maybe there is potential. And if you have this uncertainty, then just treat it as a no. Or that's how, how we did it. Because 
and that is probably also what you will learn or what you what you what you see in uh, in hiring and talking to a lot of uh, a lot of candidates if you're really convinced that this is the right person for you and your company and this is the right peer that you want to have uh, have in your group or that you want to be working with then people will say yes and if they don't say yes then it's you should probably move on well well, not move on because maybe it's just one no or a few no's in the whole group, uh, in, in the whole peop, uh, group involved in the hiring process, but rather treat maybe as a no unless people are fighting for it. It's, it's, it's not a yes. So that's it. And then the last little bit is like, okay, so this whole process took, may, uh, to, took roughly six months for Ash. And I think that's also something to keep in mind that uh, finding the right person takes time and you should already account for that time when you start hiring because if you're stressed in the whole hiring process then this might lead to you just saying yes to a person just because they are there and available but not because they are really the right person and don't fall into that trap so really be realistic about the time that um that that the whole hiring process takes so this is ash in real life um in the end he started as a pm at tutti and a year later he was promoted to um head of data so i guess these are good signs that actually he was the right person or that he is a great uh, great hire and with that i would like to thank you all for your uh, attention thank you very much yep. uh, you have to stay here oh, okay, because so we have actually a question, a question. Uh, we, ac we have actually a couple of them. You were talking about 600 candidates in the pipeline. 800. Or 800, yeah. even more. Uh, how, uh, how did you find them? How did you research them? Because there <laughs> are, uh, it's a really high number. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I was thinking whether I should go into that direction also in the talk. But for me, it was really about like spotting the talent once you have it. But there, it was mainly the passive um approach so you have a job opening and you publish it and then basically you kind of optimize it so that it can be found by many keywords mm -hmm. so we just we didn't just say senior product manager even though we were looking for a senior one so we've broadened it a little bit and we also tuned down the requirements in the uh, in the job description at some point so that the Th th basically the pipeline is opening up but you need to find a good balance that is working for you because it can also overwhelm you in work um, so it was basically publishing it to the job uh, portals thank you we have another one that is uh, how much time do you spend for each candidate <laughs> Uh, I think it's it, an it really, average. It, it really depends on the stage. So in the CV level, I would say one to five minutes per CV uh, because all of the documentation and all this kind of stuff. And then once uh, the stage is progressed, then I guess it really depends on how long you want to have these sessions. So usually we said, okay, a, a hiring manager session should be half an hour long with the knowledge that most of them will extend to 45 or 60 minutes. And we've originally scheduled the 30 minutes because some candidates might not be good enough and we wanted to have like an easy way out there. So 30 minutes at least for these candidates, but then usually an hour and plus then a little bit of um, debriefing, which is usually like 15 minutes. Um, so one hour, 15 minutes in that session. And then the on-site interview was more like a whole day's work, but not on my, shoulders only but really on the whole team and then times the number of people involved so it's quite expensive to hire but also quite expensive if you hire the wrong person so i guess it's worth it